Uh, this your boy King Eric the Great, aka Rick Capo, coming at y'all with another video at your head. And I want to title this video What Happened to Raucous Records because the 20th anniversary of the Sound Bombing 2 soundtrack is coming up next month. And I want to talk about this here. See, when Raucous started in the late 90s, it was what was considered to be an underground cult following. It signed rappers like Most Def, Tyler Quali, Farrell Monch, Company Flow. I'm pretty sure I'm missing many others, but a lot of underground rappers followed their lane. And they will put out compilations to the underground, providing the underground base, the backpack base, so to speak. In 1999, they started getting bigger. Like, Raucous will be considered the ECW of the labels because at that time, they will come in and let artists do what they want to do, be true to their sound, express themselves. They didn't have to worry about a label trying to dictate to them who they, what, they, what they want to build a style off of. So, they had some big records in 1999, like Most Def, Black on Both Sides, and Feral Manches, Eternal Affairs. Those are two big records that went gold. And they had major hits. Umi Says was on a Michael Jordan Nike commercial. Pharaoh Monches had Simon Says, which was a big record in 1999. Like, if you was in the club scene during that time and you heard that record drop, it would go crazy. It was so crazy that Red, Red Man and Method Man had to jump on that joint. Then you had the Sound Bombing 2, which we talking about now. It was full of underground classes. You had Eminem before he became like the Eminem that we knew today. You had Common when he was on his conscious tip. You had Coco Brothers, Black Stars, uh, Company Flow, R.A. the Rug Man. You had DJ Babu doing the scratches and mixes. It was an overall feel-good hip-hop joint. That Crosstown Beef joint with Medina Green and Most Def, one of my favorite hip-hop tracks ever. And them niggas got bigger. Then you had Pharaoh Monches, Most Def, and Nate Dogg, rest in peace, Oh No joint blowing up. Then Pharaoh and Styles P collabed again for the Sound Bombing 3, which had My Life, My Life is All I Have, My Rhyme, My Pen, My Path. And what I was thinking what could be the icing on the cake was them signing Cool G Rap. They signed Cool G Rap to like a million dollar deal, and I was thinking this is going to be finally Cool G's time to shine. But what happened? One of the problems that happened was, first of all, they changed their standard of practices up. Death Jam was changing the game in the East Coast. DMX, Ja, Jay-Z, they were doing video games. Death Jam was just, yeah, it was like a juggernaut. And a lot of labels had to pretty much fix themselves to compete. Then, the raucous sound tracks, like from Sound Bombing and Lyricist Lounge, they were kind of like incorporating more industry quote-unquote rappers in their compilations i get that they were trying to sell records by including more big names but that's what the downfall happened then they lost their distributor and they was distributed by mca records and mca wasn't really getting along with cool g rap because they tried to force cool g rap to change his whole image up cool g rap said in the 2002 interview that they tried to step to him on some tip. Well, hey, um, Cool G, uh, this guy on um, 50 Cent, he's blowing up right now, and he's having his muscles, and the girls like him. So we may need you to, um, you know, hit the gym a little bit and show your abs and show your muscles and your chest. So that way, maybe we can start getting some record sales. And Cool G rap being the thoroughbred street nigga that he was. He said, man, ain't none of y'all fucking dorks gonna tell me what to do. I'm from Queens. Y'all niggas signed me for a million fucking dollars and y'all gonna try to dictate my sound. Nigga, fuck you. And that's how it went. And that was Raucous' downfall. They tried to be like Dev Jam. And plus, they didn't have the machine behind them to really push those records to major hit records. Like, like a Def Jam did. The distributor was trash. You know what I'm saying? So, and knowing that, they won't find the Cool G rap. So, and eventually they had to let go. And everything just fell to places. See, they tried to 
be like Def Jam. They try to operate their standard of practices like Def Jam, but in reality, they was turning off their base and they was becoming very sloppy with the releases. It just became a mess and the label folded in 2005.